mixing water, sugar, and then heating the mixer is an operation carried out at home, in semi-industrial facilities, and even in big complexes of the food industry. Water evaporates during this heating process and little by little the concentration of sugar in the solution increases. As a consequence, several physical chemical properties of the solution change, including its boiling temperature. The goal of this video is to show how to establish the connection between the solution's concentration and its boiling temperature. However, even visually, it's possible to observe how the solution's concentration affects its behavior. Up to this moment, what we observe when passing the spatula is not much different from what we would observe in a pan filled with pure water. But the heating continues. Observe that now, with a more concentrated solution, passing the spatula leaves a path at the bottom of the pan. The solution has become more viscous. In general, increasing the temperature decreases the viscosity of a liquid. But here, the sugar concentration increases during the process, which contributes to increasing the viscosity. The net effect of these two opposing effects is to increase the viscosity. Not only the viscosity, but also many other properties of the sugar solution undergo changes as the heating continues. These properties include the solution density and its boiling temperature. Our goal will be the calculation of boiling temperatures of sugar solutions using the Uniquack model. Specifically, what we will do is to fit Uniquack parameters to correlate experimental boiling point data of sucrose solutions in water at atmospheric pressure. The first assumption we will make is that the vapor phase only contains water, meaning that we are neglecting the volatility of sucrose. We'll assume that the vapor phase behaves as an ideal gas. This is reasonable because of the relatively low pressure of the system. We will make two additional assumptions. The first of which is that the fugacity coefficient of water at saturation is equal to 1, and the other is that the pointing correction of water is also equal to 1. Together, these two assumptions mean that the effect of pressure on the liquid phase properties is negligible. Finally, we'll use the Antoine equation to calculate the vapor pressure of water when this property is needed. At equilibrium, the fugacities of water in the liquid and vapor phases should be equal. The fugacity of water in the liquid phase is given by its mole fraction times the activity coefficient times the vapor pressure. In the vapor phase, the fugacity of water is equal to the system's pressure because the vapor phase only contains water and the vapor phase is an ideal gas. Equation 4 represents the ISO fugacity condition. But here we face a problem. Because of the temperature dependence of the Uniquack model, it's not possible to obtain an explicit expression to evaluate the temperature. The temperature calculation will have to be implicit. And what will be explicit is the calculation of pressure. For that, we'll use equation 5. At this point, it's important to observe that the calculated pressure should match the experimental pressure at all points. This is indicated by equation 6. In summary, our parameter fitting problem is as follows. Our objective function, the function we need to minimize, is the summation of the square deviations in temperature between the calculated and experimental temperatures. This minimization problem is subject to constraints, and these constraints impose that the calculated pressure should match the experimental pressure, which is the atmospheric pressure, at all points. This minimization is a trial and error procedure for which we'll use Excel take advantage of the XSCOS package, which contains a function for the calculation of active coefficients using the Uniquack model. This is the spreadsheet we're going to use. This is the reference to the experimental data and to the Uniquack R and Q parameters. 
we have two components, sucrose and water. Here are their Uniquack parameters, R, Q, and the binary interaction parameters. The cells with blue background will be fitted parameters, the values of R and pressure, and the parameters of the Antoine equation to calculate the vapor pressure of water. Here are the experimental temperature and sucrose mole fraction experimental data. We can calculate the water mole fraction as 1 minus the sucrose mole fraction. We do it for the first point and then for all of them. Here we'll convert the experimental temperature from degrees Celsius to Kelvin. Again for the first point and then for all of them. And here we'll start with the calculated values. We need to calculate temperature and for the initial guess we'll use the experimental values. For the vapor pressure of water, we'll use Antoine equation, whose parameters A, B, and C are given. So here, A minus B divided by T in Kelvin plus C. Okay. Here we are, and we lock A, B, and C with F4 for the first point, for all of them. Now we calculate the activity coefficients, the logarithms of the activity coefficients with, with the uniquark function, whose first parameter is the value of the universal gas constant, R, which we lock with F4. Then the next one is the temperature. We'll use the calculated temperature cell followed by the mole fractions and the model parameters, which we lock with F4. Now we press Ctrl, Shift, Enter. And now we double click to get for all of all experimental data points. Now we get a gamma 2 as the exponential of the logarithm. The calculated pressure will be the mole fraction of water times its activity coefficient times the vapor pressure of water at the temperature of the given data point. Now we calculate the difference between the calculated pressure and the specified pressure, which is the atmospheric pressure at all points. We now calculate the difference between the calculated temperature and the experimental temperature. Of course this number is zero because we are using the experimental value as initial guess. Now we calculate the square of this deviation. Of course again zero for all points. And finally for plotting purposes we convert the calculated temperature from Kelvin to degrees Celsius. Converting for all data points. We now add the square deviations in temperature. So we use the sum function, sum of delta T squared. And what we want to do now is to minimize the summation using Excel solver. So our goal is to take this cell minimize and to do that we will change the values of the binary interaction parameters which we want to fit the cells with blue background we also change the, the, the calculated temperatures and this minimization will be subject to constraints the constraints will impose that the calculated pressure should be equal to the specified pressure so basically, the pressure difference at all points should be equal to zero. Because the parameters can be negative, we uncheck that box. And now the minimization takes place. It's done. The first thing to observe is that the calculated and experiment experimental pressures are the same at all points. 
The temperature differences are generally below one degree Celsius, and these are the fitted parameters. Let's take a look now at what the results look like in a plot. The blue dots are the experimental data, and the red line is the result of calculations with Uniquack. Although not perfect, the results are quite good. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. Let me take this opportunity to invite you to subscribe to the Uthamo channel on YouTube. And visit our Facebook page to learn about the latest videos of the channel. Thanks again, my name is Marcelo Castier, see you the next time.